The end of a once great friendship is never a good thing. Seth Rogen has dumped longtime collaborator and actor friend James Franco. What persuaded Rogen to take such a drastic step? James Franco. Or, well, the allegations against him. Since 2018, five women have stepped out and accused James Franco of inappropriate behavior. Five women. Four being his students and another who claims to have James as her mentor. James, whatever did you do? According to Tither Kaplan, one of the five women and a student of James Franco claimed that James would take advantage of his power in their aspiring dreams and compel them to do raunchy scenes. The aspiring actresses, not wanting to lose an opportunity to make it big, would comply believing that Franco would provide them career advancements. What's more, according to Tither Kaplan, if you declined a PG-18 scene, he would become all cranky and send the actress home. Okay, you don't say no to this guy. Since Kaplan, the other four have become confident enough to speak about James Franco's behavior. Acts like he has nothing to hide. He really does believe that, that people will feel like believe you, it. You couldn't say no? Um, no, I could have said no, but because of the power dynamic, the situation was so surreal and I wanted him to like me. He's definitely got two personalities um, and that doesn't mean he doesn't have a great sweet side, but when he has his other side, it's the complete polar. I don't even know what I'm allowed to say. That's the scary thing is like, I'm terrified for my career. It was a lot of nudity and sex scenes that felt that they weren't, that I felt were not artistically justified and were added in. They have accused Franco of being a terrible teacher who pins only a certain kind of role to his female students and dismisses their wishes or hopes of any further opportunity. Even his girlfriend, Violet Paley, accused Franco of putting her in an uncomfortable situation prior to their relationship, while the attorney, Plonsker, of the James Dean actor, denies all cases. This isn't the first time James Franco has found himself embroiled in controversy. In 2014, messages were leaked between him and a 17-year-old girl on Instagram. Before the DMs, he had met her outside a theater in New York, took pictures with her, then messaged her on Instagram, where he asked her questions like, do you have a boyfriend? When will you be turning 18? Even after discovering her age, he went as far as to ask for her hotel and feigned to rent a room. Um, we remember what came out of the whole ordeal. An apology and yeah, a joke. Yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed and I, uh, I guess I'm just a model of, you know, how social media is tricky. You know, it's a, it's a way people meet each other today. What I've learned, I guess just because I'm new to it, it's like you don't know who's on the other end. You meet somebody in person and you, you know, you, you get a feel for them, but you don't know who you're talking to. And, you know, so I use bad judgment and it, I learned my lesson. But unfortunately, in my position, I mean, I have a very good life, but... Not only do I have to go through the embarrassing kind of rituals of meeting someone, sometimes if I do that, then it gets, you know, published for the world. So now, I, you know, it's like doubly embarrassing, but... What, you say? Tell me more? Well, while James Franco apologized on ABC's Live with Kelly and Michael, I used bad judgment and I learned my lesson. His best buddy and longtime collaborator Seth Rogen made a joke about the whole thing and trivialized the encounter between Franco and the 17-year-old. On Saturday Night Live, Seth Rogen delivered his lines from a journal for his opening monologue, narrating to the audience that, To make myself feel better, I decided to prank James Franco. I posed as a girl on Instagram, told him I was way young. He seemed unfazed. I have a date to meet him at the Ace Hotel. We're here tonight so James can live out one of his unfulfilled sexual fantasies. <laughs> as the saying goes, you can tell a lot about a person through their company of friends. This is one of the reasons why actress Charlene Yi claims that Seth Rogen was Franco's enabler. And this wasn't taken too well by the disaster artist Seth, who, in response to Charlene Yi's accusations, confessed that he would never allow such a behavior, let alone cover it. I despise abuse and harassment, and I would never cover or conceal the actions of someone doing it, or knowingly put someone in a situation where they were around someone like that. Seth Rogen proved his point by saying that even though in 2018 he said he would work just fine with Franco, he doesn't plan on collaborating anymore. He really dumped Franco when he further added that he regrets making the infamous 2014 joke on Saturday Night Live. Moreover, in an interview, a question regarding the allegations against Franco was brought up, and Seth was asked whether those cases have affected their personal and professional bond. Rogen responded, I don't know if I can define that right now during this interview. I can say it, 
um, you know, it has changed many things in our relationship and our dynamic. Meanwhile, James Franco is all, I am a changed man and moving on to a new chapter in life. Seth isn't taking the breakup too painfully either. To him, it is far more painful for the other people involved in the case. I have no pity for myself in this situation. There you have it, the two stars who appeared together in several movies like the cult classic Freaks and Geeks, Pineapple Express, The Disaster Artist, This is the End, and The Interview will no longer be working together. Seth Rogen insists that this shouldn't be a surprise at all, but whew, fans weren't expecting that. Is this finally an end to a long movie-packed relationship? What are your thoughts about the whole James Franco situation? Was it justified for Seth Rogen to let go of his long-term friend, 127 hours actor James Franco? Spill your thoughts in the comment section and stay tuned for more. The show and some women during uh, your time on stage uh, said that was hypocritical. They went to Twitter and said that was hypocritical based on their experiences that they've had with you. They made some allegations. I wonder if you have read those tweets and if so, how you respond to them. Well, the ones I read were not accurate. One of the things that I've learned is that this is a conversation that obviously needs to be had. There are people, women and, and others, who have not been a part of this conversation. And I, I truly believe, and why I was wearing the pin, is that they need to be a part of this like conversation. Like I said, you know, um, there are stories that need to get out. I, I can't, the way I live my life, I can't.